How's it going, everybody? It's your boy, homie G, and I'm back. All right, my little homies, I got a great lesson for you today. The topic is explaining Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter. Now, I know some of you already have this down. Your parents have talked to you about it. Maybe you've seen stuff on social media. You've read things. Great. But I know there's a lot of little homies that are confused. They have no idea why people are getting so heated. So, that's why I'm here. Let's get started. Oh, the theme, the theme first. People's politics shape their beliefs and their truths. And we can reverse that. We can say people's truths and their beliefs shape their politics. That's a recurring theme. That's been going on since the dawn of time. People are gonna interpret one event one way versus other people interpreting another way. It's called perspective. Your history teachers probably taught you about it. Now, let's go ahead and start with Black Lives Matter and their movement. The Black Lives Matter movement reality, we have Native American lives down here, Black lives here, Latino lives, Asian lives. Then we have this gap. And here comes white lives at the top. This is the scope of mattering, life mattering in the United States. Now this gap is caused by structural or systemic racism, which you probably heard about. Proponents, the allies of Black Lives Matter in the movement, simply want racial equality. That's what they're after. Racial equality, equal treatment, not mistreatment, under the law, by the police, by the judges, by the system, economic access. They want, they want to have access to the same things in terms of wealth, income, that white lives, white people have in this country. Now that's a known fact that there is a wealth gap. This is straight from Barron's Magazine, which I subscribe to. Uh, the wealth gap is in focus in this magazine. So basically the article gives us data on how much more wealth whites have in relation to other ethnic minorities, especially Latino and African American in this country. And it behooves us all. In fact, that's what one of the things here. Why that's bad news for everyone, the wealth gap. It's bad news for everyone. We are better off as a nation if we can fix this. I strongly believe that poverty and race intersect. And it's one of the causes, well, both, both of them combined are the cause for what we're seeing in the United States. This, this unrest, this anger that's been built up for centuries because of a certain dynamic between ethnic groups. All right, now let's move on to All Lives Matter and their reality. They see the Black Lives Matter movement as a movement to put black lives above, elevate above their own lives, white lives, and the lives of others. Now, when you think about it, all lives matter. That sounds kind of catchy. Oh yeah, that's, that's about right, all lives matter. But that's a misinterpretation of the movement. That is not what Black Lives Matter proponents are saying. They're simply saying, hey, we're, we're down here. We don't care, we don't wanna be above you. We simply wanna get closer to how you're being treated, to the access you have economically, to the way you are being privileged by police, by the, the economic sectors, by judges. We simply do not want to be profiled while we're shopping or while we're driving or while we're at the park. We don't want people calling the police, assuming we're guilty of something so that the police come and can basically almost get away with killing us. And in many cases, that happens. We are not after being above anybody else. We simply want parity. We simply want to level up to where white lives matter in this country today. Now, all lives matter proponents, they either refuse or don't see this dynamic. They don't acknowledge it. They don't want to say, yeah, there's racism in the United States, structural racism. They say, no, there's no such thing. There's some sort of conspiracy. Maybe it's socialism, something, something else. It certainly cannot be the structure of our country and how it's been built for 300 years or whatever. Uh, and they believe that putting black lives above their own 
is unfair to others. It sounds unfair. Let me give you another example. Now this is a science example because I'm a science teacher. So in the 80s, maybe, I don't know, I can't recall, whales were being overhunted for their blubber. A lot of economic, you know, things that whales can produce. Blubber, I don't know what else. Uh, anyway, so there was a rally, a rallying cry, I should say, to save the whales by all humanity. We saw their numbers dwindling to the verge of extinction. The human race rallied. We stopped other nations from fishing or from uh, hunting the whales and killing them. Uh, and, and eventually the whale numbers recovered. And that's great. But can you imagine, can you imagine if someone would have said, what about the seals? Or what about the dolphins? All aquatic lives matter. Mammal lives matter. That's ridiculous, my little homies. You should see that there's, that argument is flawed because that wasn't the emergency. The emergency was saving the whales from the brink of extinction. We have an emergency in this country. Okay, the mistreatment of African Americans is the emergency. We must address it. We cannot move forward as a nation without addressing it, without taking action to fix these inequalities. Okay, so this is where we stand. Don't expect everyone to agree. Not everyone's going to agree. All we need is a majority to agree. So we could take action. And we can do more than making videos, Instagram posts, Facebook posts. That's not enough. We must take action. You must decide for yourself where you're going to stand. And you have to decide where you're going to stand. Sitting in the middle does us no good. It does us absolutely no good. You're better than that. Do more reading. Watch more videos. Figure it out more for yourself, and then take a stand. Choose a side. All right, my little homies. That's all I got to say. Have a good one. And I'm out. Peace.